What is resilience and why should you care? Good question. The simple answer to that question, by the way, is because it can save your life? Yeah, it really can. Resilience is that powerful. Now, I want you to think of a particular word. This word is Kung Fu. When you hear the word Kung Fu, what do you think of? Well, if you're not thinking of an old TV series from circa 1970 with David Carradine, you're probably thinking of Chinese martial arts. And you're probably thinking that Kung Fu is a word that describes Chinese martial arts. The truth is, you're wrong. And so are, so are most people, because most people, and many even in the martial arts world, don't realize what the word Kung Fu actually means. So Kung Fu is a badly anglicized version of the Chinese word or expression Gong Fu. Gong Fu does not relate to the martial arts explicitly. You can have Gong Fu in anything. You can have Gong Fu in cooking, Gong Fu in playing golf. You can have Gong Fu in anything. So what is, what is Gong Fu? Well, Gong Fu expresses the idea of, well, sometimes translated as skill or particular skill or uh, but it's really, it expresses the idea of an almost magical ability, of a kind of world-class ability, uh, uh, of a special power you have. And, and most often that power is conceived of immediately as something interior to you. So it's a particular type of power. And in the martial arts world, that could best be translated really by the English word resilience. Because that's what it really is. That's what it signifies. So when you look at ancient martial arts, their training in East Asian martial arts did not begin by learning how to fight. That was completely secondary. It always began with months and months of making the body firm and strong. Firm and strong. That was the whole and entire point. And in making the body firm and strong, it meant not only the way we think of it in the West as physical exercise, you know, big muscles, whatever. No, it was much more than that. It was firming up the, the, the tendons, the ligaments, it was learning to relax the soft tissues at the same time. It was opening up the joints. It was creating a better energy flow throughout the body, a better flow of energy, a better flow of all the bodily fluids as well. So really regulating the entire metabolism, and that's what it meant. And making the body so strong that it could withstand automatically anything that was going to be thrown at it from the outside. So, for example, about 90 years ago, there was a famous book published, famous in China, called The 72 Arts of the Shaolin. And the immediate assumption you might have, if you know anything about the Shaolin Temple and its, its fighting style, was, okay, 72 Arts of the Shaolin must be 72 fighting styles, 72 applications, 72 ways of doing some sort of combat. Uh, in fact, it had nothing to do with that. The 72 Arts of the Shaolin are all entirely about cultivating Gong Fu, cultivating resilience. They're all essentially what we would call Qigong systems. And they're built, they're there to make the body firm and strong, to make, first of all, to make the body impervious to impact, to physical impact. So your arms become impervious to physical impact, your fists, your legs, your, your torso, everything becomes impervious to physical impact. Uh, so that way, in, in actual combat, you can't be hurt. And the flip side of that, of course, is what it's to have the ability to deliver blows that cannot be withstood. So it's all of that. It's creating a super resilience. And yeah, it took months to do, obviously, uh, but it always worked. So this is a proven system. It was a, an ancient resilience system that was proven through literally 15 centuries of documented evidence. So really pretty cool. So what are the benefits of resilience in general? And keep in mind when I'm talking about resilience, I, I don't need to talk about anything specifically East Asian, although I'm doing that kind of in this video just as illustration. But the benefits of resilience are, first of all, simple. Health, immunity, longevity. Health, immunity, longevity. Three things that probably mean a lot to you, if you think about it. But it's more than that. It's increased mental focus. It's better sleep. It's greatly expanded energy that you feel throughout the day that doesn't ever really abandon you during the day. So it's all of these things. And you may, you may know the story historically of the, the Indian monk Bodhidharma who went to the Shaolin Temple about 15 centuries ago from India, because the Shaolin Temple already existed. Uh, and he found, of course, the, the monks there were basically, they were fat, out of shape, lazy, and they couldn't stay awake for their meditation sessions. So what did Bodhidharma do? Well, he gave them some specific exercises, some specific exercise systems 
to make them resilient. And these exercise systems, things like muscle tendon changing, bone marrow cleansing, things like this, are, they still exist today. We still know how to do these today. In fact, I've taught them to thousands of people worldwide, but they still exist. And they've been proven to work. They, these exercises made the Shaolin monks enormously strong. Of course, it wasn't the only thing they were doing. Come on. So they became very strong, very powerful. And that was the basis of their martial arts. And they would be the, they would be the first to tell you that without that, the, the actual fighting applications mean nothing. All those pretty routines of doing really cool stuff, they mean absolutely nothing without the Gongfu. Without that internal power, they mean nothing. So resilience is making the body and the entire body-mind organism firm and strong using whatever methods are available. That's really what it is. And the thing here is, and this is the kicker, if you ignore the physical dimension of resilience, you get none of the benefits I've talked about. None. Keep that in mind. And you're free to test that. And how can you test it? Well, you can test it with a lot of these so-called resilience training out there, or mental toughness training, all of which, or most of which, tends to be very cerebral. As if you could sit down on your butt in a classroom and learn some concepts and then come out more resilient. Well, there's a limit to how, how resilient you can get from that kind, of, that kind of learning because it is naturalized. It doesn't become part of your psychophysical organism. So it doesn't really work. So that's really important to keep in mind. Now, obviously, there are dimensions of resilience that go beyond the physical. There's some mental and emotional uh, dimensions as well, because our biggest energy drains as human beings are mental and emotional. In fact, a lot of that comes from our, cultu from our cultural conditioning. Everything we've been taught since we were knee-high to the proverbial grasshopper, definitely. But the purpose of resilience is to show you how to overcome your culture, transcend your culture, go beyond its limitations. All human cultures have their limitations, their blind spots. Really important to know. So just before you go, remember, if you love this content, like and subscribe. But above all, go below and check out the links below. I think you'll be very happy you did. You'll learn a whole lot more. I'm Dr. Simeon Roger, and we will see you next time. Bye for now.